here is question number 11 in previous video we solved uh, 10 uh, questions and we discussed them in detail here a statement first tells you uh, the teaching of non native literature to the student of english language teaching is arid arid means dull or boring you can say a statement second the negative response in elt classroom can create an interesting classroom situation answer is four here a statement first is incorrect but a statement second is correct why it is uh, incorrect and uh, why second is correct uh, let's go through the explanation here a statement first claims that the teaching of uh, non-native literature to students of english language teaching is arid it is dull meaning it is dull or lacking in interest this statement is not necessarily true and it depends on teachers mm, approach method and material so it is quite clear that it depends on teachers approach method and material how he teaches uh, this subject matter that uh, makes it uh, you know the matter of interest or uh, matter of uh, being arid now let's come to the uh, statement second it states that negative responses in elt classroom can create an interesting classroom situation this statement is true as uh, the negative responses can be used as a form of feedback all right so you can see that statement second is uh, correct and statement first uh, is not correct or we can say partially true so if something is partially true it is a false statement okay so here you you can take note of uh, this line uh, negative responses can be used as form of feedback now let's come to the uh, question number 12 which of these statements are true in the context of neuro -linguist linguistic program okay nlp this is also called nlp now neuro in nlp means our behavioral behavior is determined by our sensory experiences uh, grammatical knowledge is a matter of practice and nlp was developed by richard Bendler and uh, john grinder in 1970s true and uh, neuro covers invisible thoughts and visible uh, physiological reactions all of the above your answer is here and we will discuss now uh, the answer answer is second explanation let's go through the explanation and uh, here is the explanation neuro in nlp means that uh, our behavior is determined by our sensory experience is true and nlp is based on the idea that our behavior and thinking patterns are closely connected to our sensory experiences and that by understanding the changing these experiences we can change our behavior and thinking now uh, second is grammatical knowledge is a matter of practice is not true and nlp focuses on uh, uh, communication language pattern and behavioral pattern and not on grammatical knowledge c uh, option uh, c is here nlp was developed by richard bandler and uh, this is true and john grinder in 1970s uh, nlp neuro linguistic program was developed in the 1970s by richard bandler and john grinder both of whom were interested in understanding how people communicate and how they can uh, can be helped to con communicate more effectively now d uh, neuro covers invisible thoughts and visible physiological reaction is true nlp focuses on the connection between our thoughts language and behavior and how we can use this understanding to change our behavior and achieve our goals so answer second a c and d are uh, correct here and uh, the reason behind uh, uh, explanation and uh, doing discussion is to find out the important things and in English literature when people ask me what is important everything is important and you have to develop uh, you know there are two ways uh, uh, you, you should study English literature first is you need to focus on understanding uh, the subject material and second is mugging up some people uh, don't uh, don't believe in mugging up and they say uh, that we will only understand we will try to understand each and everything but this is not true if you wish to clear ugc net exam particularly you have to mug up lots of facts as well and you need to understand the facts uh, all the facts whatever you and whatever you are reading try to understand them and later make uh, make many lists like uh, in our uh, courses we have given you list of the works and theories and uh, you know years uh, just to mug up because uh, mugging up is also a way to clear this exam okay and both both thing combination of uh, these two techniques you have to use to clear the UGC net exam 
now let's come to the question number 13 identify the combinations that belong to the uh, genre of sci-fi speculative fictions uh, vandana singh the woman who thought she was planet and uh, tahmina durani blasphemy uh, salman rushdi the satanic verses uh, priya uh, sarukai kravya generation 14 and uh, gautam bhatia the wall okay so let's come to the answer answer is second and a d and e r uh, a d and e these are the answers okay we will also discuss the answers so first one is vandana singh now this work the woman who thought she was planet is a science fiction uh, like you can uh, uh, you know think about this work and you can just uh, uh, take some clue from the title as well is a science fiction and speculative fiction the novel tells the story of women who begins to believe that she is a planet and explores the theme of ident uh, identity consciousness and the relationship between human and the environment Tamina Durani's work uh, Blasphemy is a novel that tells the story of women's struggle against the constant of uh, patriarchal society in Pakistan it is not uh, a science fiction or a speculative fiction all right so this is not answer but you can take uh, these notes Salman Rushdie the satanic verses is a novel that deals with themes of religion identity and politics but it is not a science fiction or a speculative fiction as well this is famous work by Salman Rushdie uh, Priya uh, Sarukai uh, Krabriya generation 14 is a science fiction a speculative fiction the novel is set in future where the world is controlled by artificial intelligence and artificial intelligence is current news uh, and explores themes of technology, power, and human experience. Gautam Bhatia, The Wall is science fiction, is speculative fiction. The novel tells the story of a world uh, where a wall has been uh, built to separate the rich from poor and explores themes of inequality, class, and power. So, the correct answer is second, as uh, we discussed earlier. Now, let's come to the 14 one. Again, uh, here you have some statements. Uh, and uh, this is from linguistic this question is from linguistics so we have to study linguistics as well uh, given below are two statements here assertion a and uh, second is reason r jack salakan was radically critical of uh, sstm uh, psychoanalytical theory lakan was expelled from the international psychoanalytical uh, uh, association in 1959 and uh, this is not true okay let's go through the answer answer is second and uh, we will go through the explanation here so assertion states that uh, jack salakan was radically critical of the system uh, psychoanalytical theory this is true lakan is known for his uh, criticism of traditional psychoanalytical theories of sigmund freud and carl jung he developed his own theories of psychoanalytical uh, psychoanalysis and was known for his emphasis on the role of language in shaping human experience and his rejection of traditional psychoanalytical concepts such as uh, the Oedipus complex and the death drive. So, he was against these theories and he rejected these concepts totally. That is why he was expelled. Now, reason R states that Lakan was expelled from the International Psychoanalytical Association in 1959, which is also true. Lacan's theories were not accepted by many of his colleagues in psychoanalytical community and he was expelled from the International Psychoanalytical Association IPA in 1953 not 1959 all right uh, you should know and uh, that's why the reason was not correct for his unorthodox views therefore the reason R does not explain the assertion A as it states that Lacan's theories were not accepted by many of his colleagues in his psychoanalytical community and he was expelled from the international psychoanalytical association ipa in 1953 for his unorthodox views which confirms that he was radically critical of the system psychoanalytical theory now let's come to the uh, question number 15 and here your uh, mugging up technique will work if you you are mugging up so many facts and the lists uh, in english literature you can do such questions very well now, when was Haruki Murakami's Men Without Women published? So, it was, uh, answer is uh, 2014. It got published in 2014 and uh, it was translated and published in English in 
2017 again it is collection of seven short stories so you can remember the, it has seven uh, short stories each featuring a solitary male protagonist and explores themes of loan, loss loneliness and the search of connection now here you have again statements Hannah Arendt's defactualization is very close to the concept of post-truth and here comes the understanding part you should know the word defactualization well and uh, the concept post-truth as well so we have uh, one series we have notes for these all uh, facts so if you have uh, already joined our course you should know this the statement second post-truth relies on absolute lies in the light of the above statement choose the most appropriate answer from the option given below okay so here we have uh, you know explanation we will go through this so here is the word defactualization is very close to the concept of post truth this statement is true uh, in her book uh, hana's book the origin of totalitarianism uh, where uh, there is single single uh, ruler okay if you don't know what is totalitarianism so if you have single ruler somewhere or a single party okay which has the reign now uh, you can uh, say that they uh, they have totalitarian society you can say or totalitarian uh, you, uh, reign you can call it okay uh, arendt uh, coined the term de factualization so you should also note down this defactualization to describe the process by which totalitarian regimes manipulate the truth to suit their own needs this concept is similar to the idea of post truth which refers to a situation in which emotion and personal beliefs are more inf influential in shaping public opinion than facts and evidence statement second post truth relies on absolute lies this statement is not true post truth does not necessarily rely on absolute lies but rather on the manipulation and selective use of facts and evidence to suit a particular agenda or narrative rather than on objective truth so the answer is third statement first is correct but statement second is incorrect now we will just uh, match all these works and you can uh, uh, you can go through the answer is four okay and uh, here uh, Donald Dave is known for against uh, romanticism which is poem uh, so here if you want to match it you can uh, directly match it let's come to the question number 18 which of the following are Plato's main objection against poetry I made it quite clear in uh, in my previous video as well the poet is an imitator the poet is incapable of bravery the poet by fueling passion and emotion weakens the reason capacity of uh, reasoning capacity of the citizen the poet is less responsible the poet has no knowledge of the world so your answer is first a c and e well so explanation is here plato's uh, the main objection against poetry is in his wor works particularly in the republic in his work famous work republic were that the poet is an imitator who does not have knowledge of the world and therefore cannot convey true knowledge a and e he also argues that the poetry by fueling passion emotion weakens the reasoning capacity of the uh, citizen c and he does not object that the poet is incapable of bravery or poet is less responsible he does not say these two sentences in his theories uh, he didn't propose any theory but he wrote uh, something about poetry and uh, about their uh, uh, responsibilities here we have to match the list and uh, this is again the part where we have to mug up a, a lot of uh, lists and if we make a list year wise uh, publication and year wise writer list uh, like you find in our course uh, you can easily do such uh, such questions okay so answer uh, fourth is the answer and here our explanation as you can see the lighthouse was published in 1927 sunset and lover got published in 1913 and finnegan wake in 1939 and the wasteland in 1922 okay so th this is the answer uh, qu question number 20 uh, statement first comparative literature is a study of a different culture nation and uh, genres 
and it explores the inherent interrelationship between literature and other forms of cultural exploration. Statement second, in the study of literature and culture, the importance of methodology is secondary and here the answer is third answer third test that a statement first is true but a statement second is false. Let us come to the explanation part. Uh, statement first is true, comparative uh, uh, literature is a field where we uh, study and uh, field of study that examines different cultures, nation, uh, nations and genres and the relationship between literature and other form of cultural expressions. Uh, statement second is false, in the study of literature and culture methodology is important to approach uh, the material is an analytical and systematic way without proper methodology the study of literature and culture may be subject, uh, subjective or lack critical rigor. So, with this we end this uh, session as well, now we will do uh, from 21 to 30 questions in next video, see you soon.